there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today's fountain pen is my second Jinhao Centennial. I received my first Jinhao Centennial almost a year ago, on Christmas Eve as a matter of fact. I remember in my review that I mentioned I was underwhelmed by the nib and the finish of this pen. Even though the orangey red was an attempt to replicate the original Parker Duofold Big Red, I remember thinking at the time that I wished Jinhao would do this same pen in a cooler acrylic. Well, they must have listened to me because you can now get this pen in 15 different finish and hardware combinations, including this one in sky blue. I was immediately taken by the photo of this pale teal blue cracked ice finish, and it's even more beautiful in person. Of course, there are tons of Parker Duofold clones, and lookalikes out there and not all of them are Chinese. Everyone from Schaefer to Pilot and Sailor have copied the classic design and even Mont Blanc. But I'm going to put this one up against my Conklin Durograph, my Moonman M600 and M600S, as well as my Kaigaloo 316. I'm also really pleased with the ink that I've matched with this pen. So let's take a closer look at yet another Parker Duofold Centennial clone right now. So another NPD, New Pen Day. And another package from China. This one actually came very quickly. I was very surprised at this. I can't remember exactly how much, but it's a little bit over two weeks. So let's open it and find out. Hmm, interesting packaging. Well, hot dog! Yay! That cuts the mustard with me. And we have two pens in their condoms. And they're both Jin Hao's. This is the Jin Hao Centennial. And it joins my other Jin Hao Centennial, my first one. This uh, orange color, or what they used to call Big Red, was the first one that came out, and I bought that. And although it's a nice pen, you can see that review, although it's a nice pen, I was underwhelmed by the finish. Uh, it is sort of trying to replicate the original design of the duo fold. I think it's missed on the color, but uh, it's just, even if it was the original color, it's kind of plain. So I was kind of hoping that they would come up with some more interesting finishes on the model. And here is one that really intrigued me. It's like a cracked ice, but it's a very light blue. It's showing up uh, a lot more blue than it actually is. It's more like a teal blue an aquamarine kind of a blue than it is here on camera but it's a very nice model this is a fine Jin Hao nib so I'll clean that one out and do a review on that and compare it to the original one I got so what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample after the writing sample please stay tuned as I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. As I said in the introduction, this is my second Jin Hao Centennial. Here's the first one I purchased last year. When I look at the details of this new version, I'm going to point out a couple of subtle differences. Functionally and dimensionally, they are identical. From the top, we see a black plastic flat finial with a silver medallion that has the Jin Hao Chariot logo embossed into it. It's uh, prominent and on a brushed aluminum type of background. It's very nice. Then we have a chrome clip ring and attached clip that has another Jin Hao Chariot right there. Is that upside down? Yes. This time it's uh, stamped into the top of the clip. The clip is very springy and very usable and in keeping with the original Parker Duofold it has a ball style 
and rather than the Parker Arrow of the Centennial from the mid-90s. Moonman did the same thing with their original M600. It was the one that came with a Schmidt nib. And then they went to this, the more traditional Parker style arrow from the Centennial of the mid-90s with the M600S. I have two of those. I have three, but I gave away one as a gift to my son. Regardless of the arrow or the ball style, these clips are very nice in that they are high up on the cap and therefore when they're in a shirt or a coat pocket, the pen doesn't rise up too far like other pens and stays tucked neatly down low. Of course, this is a big pen, so you need some deep pockets. Not money-wise, but physically-wise. If you want an original Parker Centennial from the 90s, you'll need deep monetary pockets as well. The cap is straight until we get to a wide chrome cap band, which tapers slightly and has Jinhao embossed in large block letters in the center of two embossed channels. That slight taper in the cap band allows for a very small step down to the barrel, which is also straight until we get to another chrome ring which separates the barrel from the black plastic end finial which tapers to a flat bottom. The cap unscrews with one, two, and about three quarter turns right on the border of annoying. The words annoying. You go ahead, say it, say it. I'm annoying, I'm annoying, I'm annoying. <laughs> I'm annoying. Say it, Amy, say it. Well, she can't stand it when I'm right. And reveals a black plastic tapering section with a rounded bulge towards the number six steel nib. The section is identical to those of the Moonman M600 and M600S. There's the M600. And here is the M600S, which is identical to the M600. And here is the Kaigalu 316. So lined up here, we have the three sections, top to bottom, Kaigaloo 316, M600 Moonman, and Jinhao Centennial. The Kaigaloo is actually slightly larger in its bulge right there. It's also a lot heavier. So this section is very, very similar, if not identical, to the Parker Duofold Centennial from the mid 90s which was a refinement or a modernization I should say to the original 1920s dual fold which had a chunkier and much shorter section. Let's take a closer look at this nib. It is slightly different than the one in last year's Jinhao. It has a small chariot Jinhao and a large letter F for fine and the usual Jinhao scroll work around the outside. Here is the Jinhao from a year ago, but you can see they've changed it. They've removed that 18K GP and uh, made the logo a little bit smaller and allowed room for the grade of the pen. And there is the plastic feed. Again, one of the advantages of the number six size fountain pen nib feed and collar assembly from Jinhao is how easy they are to swap with another standard number six size nib like Yovo, Bach, and the like. Whether you have an X450, X750, or a 159, the nibs are easy to swap in the color assembly and easy to pull if you just want to swap them friction fit. I have these two fully one number six size nibs in a medium and a broad that I bought to use for experiments in nib grinding. I'm gearing up to try to grind this broad into an architect italic. I love what Jack has done with my Memento Zero nib and I want to give it a shot. This nib on the Centennial is so easy to pull and swap. I think I might just use this pen to do all the testing. See how easy this is to take out. You just unscrew. You can see the collar assembly even has the Jinhao Chariot branding on it. The section unscrews and there is a Jinhao branded cartridge converter. Now that's a lot of branding. With three Jinhaos and four chariots 
Shame on you if you think you were ripped off when you thought this was a Parker Centennial. And there is another subtle change here from last year's Centennial. And that's this little rubber or silicone O-ring right here at the bottom of the section. This pen, of course, can't be uh, made into an eyedropper because of all the metal involved in the section and the barrel. But this might be here for added protection against internal leaks and also as a pressure pad from over tightening the barrel causing cracking in the acrylic but you can feel it snug down just as it squeezes that silicone o-ring and while we have the cap off let's look at it in the light for a moment this acrylic is so nicely translucent that you can actually see a little step that is milled right inside there and you can see that black section going into the uh, translucent acrylic and as I turn it you'll see how that there's that ring at the top of the section comes into contact with that little step there and causes um, a seal for the nib. I failed to mention that the section does have a chrome ring at the bottom and another chrome ring at the top. The converter is Jinhao and not standard international. To use cartridges you'll have to get what I call the Chinese standard cartridge either in Jinhao or Hongdian. You can get them in bulk on eBay and on Amazon. The cap posts, but just barely. Of course, all Parker Centennial clones suffer from not being able to post. It's part of the design. Here's a Conklin Durograph, which is a clone of the Parker Duofold. No surprise, it has the same issue. However, in the hand and unposted, the Jinhao is nicely balanced. The acrylic is light, but the metal in the section keeps the weight shifted towards the front of the pen where it belongs. This is very comfortable and one of my favorite pens in the hand. The Kaigalu is much heavier than either the Moonman or the Jinhao. And the weight balance is quite a bit off. You can feel the weight at the back of that pen, even when it's not posted. Let's take a moment to appreciate this acrylic. It's as nice as some of the acrylics I've seen from Pen BBS. Almost as nice as the acrylic on this Leonardo Ferrari Grande. So around $15 uh, you can get this pen and it's a substantial bargain when you consider this Moonman M600 was 6150 US when it came out. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here we are with the Jinhao Centennial Sky Blue. And here is a Moonman M600, a Conklin Durograph, a Kaigalu 316, and a Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted, as well as can be expected. You can see that they're all really long with the exception of the Momento Zero, which posts very nicely. You can see why I love it so much. And the Durograph, that's not its original nib, that's an Atami nib I put in there because the Conklin's nib was pretty crappy. Jojo! And I bought two of them too, they were both really crappy. And so it has a different nib in it. I'm hearing that they are switching to Yovo, and so the jury is out as to whether Conklin's going to improve in the nib area or not. We shall see. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Jinhao Centennial. And it has a fine steel nib. And the ink today is J. Herbin. 
cyanite du Nepal. And here is the swatch for the Gervin. 1798 Kyanite du Nepal. It has a really nice shimmer in it. And right next to it is Diamine and Jack Frost, which I just got. Here's the Jack Frost and that cool ink vent calendar ink from last year. There's a lot of red sheen in the Jack Frost and a lot of fleck as well. Um, but what I've discovered is that the Jack Frost has clogged up every pen I've put it in so far, but the Gerbin is, uh, has got as much shimmer, if not more shimmer than that, and it uh, hasn't clogged up any pens. In fact, I've had it in my Momento Zero since the beginning, and it's working wonderfully. And if you don't want any shimmer at all, but some nice red sheen and a color that kind of matches these, this is a little bit bluer, this is a little bit more green, and the Hiroshizuku Kanpeki is in the middle. This is one of my favorite inks, Hiroshizuku Kanpeki. And it's the ink that I go to whenever I have flow issues with any of my pens. I'll put Kanpeki in it. It's a very nice lubricating kind of ink. So let's check the wetness. This is a decently wet pen, right out of the box. And it is definitely a fine nib. And it's also decently smooth. For a fine nib. Now the Centennial that I got last year came with a medium nib and you didn't have a choice. That was it. And it was a medium. But this one just comes with this fine nib and I didn't have any choice with my vendor it just came and on the ad it said it was a 0.5 millimeter uh, nib and on my Richard Binder chart it comes up as exactly 0.5 millimeters which is a Western fine and a Japanese between a fine to a medium. As to line variation, that's no pressure and that's pushing it a bit, but it's very stiff. You don't even want to try to flex this nib. And our writing sample And some reverse writing. Actually does very well. And some quick writing. As you can see, the feed has no problems whatsoever. You might be able to hear there that there's a good amount of feedback with this nib, which isn't surprising since it is a fine, but being a fine, it isn't scratchy. And that actually kind of surprised me a little bit uh, because most fine nibs I've experienced uh, tend to scratch a little bit, but this is actually a nice bit of feedback. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, there's no hiding the fact that I love the Parker Duofold Centennial size and shape in my hand. I now have, let's get all these clones in here. Cindy the clown! Uh. Two, three, four, whoops, get in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I now have nine Parker Duofold clones and not a real Parker Duofold in sight. 
Perhaps if I sold all of these, I could afford a down payment on a Parker. I must admit one of the things that I admire the most on a genuine Parker dual-fold is the lovely design on the gold nib. And it's the one thing no one has copied. A bridge too far, I expect. Go away, clones. Okay, everyone out. Say, uh, maybe we better see if the closet is locked. Let McGee, it isn't locked. Right. This pen balances beautifully in my hand, and the section is smooth, thick, comfortable, and long enough to accommodate most grips. The threads aren't sharp, and the nib is smooth and juicy. And the price is almost unbeatable at $15 US. Collect all 15 of these colors and finishes, and it would only cost you $225 US. and you'd get 15 pens. You'd still need another $345 US in order to get one Parker. Even though the line is very fine, it isn't as unpleasant as other very fine nibs I've used. I only say unpleasant because my handwriting really doesn't like fine lines. I tend to write medium to large letters with larger flourishes in the capitals, and I don't like it when my line wobbles uh, as they do with a fine nib. But this isn't unpleasant in that way at all. Plus, it is a very smooth nib for a fine. I'm still going to swap it out for a medium or at least experiment with my other nibs on this pen. It might end up being another architect italic. The only negatives I can think of about this pen are the two, one, two, and three quarter turns to uncap and the horrible posting, uh, but, but that goes for the original and all of the clones as well. Begun. The Clone War has. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.